Good morning. Welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church in Poughkeepsie, New York, and our virtual worship series. This video is for Sunday, July 16th, 2023, the seventh Sunday after Pentecost. Thank you for tuning in this morning. Glad you're here with us. Now let's take a moment to frame our hearts and minds before God as we get ready to worship together today. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for planting your word and your promises within us. By your Holy Spirit, nurture that seed so that we may grow in faith, hope, and love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Okay, so the gospel for this morning is, according to St. Matthew in the 13th chapter, Glory to you, O Lord. The same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of the wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, and in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So here we are in today's uh, gospel that I just read you. We have one of those rare occasions when Jesus actually explains a parable all the way through to his disciples. In that second paragraph um, in, that we read, uh, verse 18 on, when he says, Hear then the parable of the sower. Um, the sentence that's missing in the lectionary text for some reason is the sentence where the disciples say to Jesus, hey, later on, you know, after he says this, they get back into the room and they're like, hey, Jesus, what? We don't understand. What the heck are you talking about? Can you explain this? <laughs> so, um, uh, that, so Jesus does explain it, which means there's hardly anything left to say because now the whole thing's been totally explained, <laughs> right? But, but then again, why does he have to? Why did the disciples ask? Didn't they get it? And why didn't they get it? If they didn't, don't they have ears? They're, they're the disciples. And if they don't have ears to hear what he's saying, how is anybody else going to get it? Um, so in a way, I maybe find comfort in the fact that they don't get it at first either. Um, but, you know, then you think, well, maybe they're just asking him rhetorically. Maybe they're, maybe they're just like, Hey, Jesus, can you tell us why you have to explain all this in parables to everybody all the time? You know, but that's not the question he answered. He didn't tell them why he told parables. He told them what the parable meant. So it's pretty clear the disciples did not understand this thing and weren't going to understand it for a while. Um, <coughs> so do you? Do we understand, like truly understand this parable? I mean, of course we do. You're watching my tape. We're people of faith. 
you know, um, because we're faithful and faith-filled folks. I mean, you know, it's tempting to think that because of all that, we are the seeds that have the roots. We're the ones who hear the word and understand it because we've been doing this for a long time, you know. Um, on the other hand, there's this other conversation Jesus has uh, with the religious leaders. Remember this one where he says uh, three times in one paragraph that the religious leaders have replaced God's word with their own traditions and opinions. Um, they thought they understood the word too. They thought they had ears and eyes. And he keeps calling them deaf and blind. Well, what's up with that? I mean, well, hey, what? Well, we got roots. What are our roots? What are your roots? Could it be that sometimes, or, or maybe even more than sometimes, we're more deeply rooted in tradition and personal experience um, than we are in the root commands of Christ? I mean, you know, we're always talking about, well, this is the way we have to, just the way we do it, just the way we have to do it. So why do you want to change? I mean, how many people, how many people say what that old saying is, um, um, I love progress. It's change I can't stand. <laughs> so, I mean, aren't, aren't we often rooted in the way we've always done it and what's comfortable to us in our personal experience? And, you know, um, that seems to ground us more so sometimes than the root command of Christ, which is to love each other and to love our enemies. Um, <laughs> I mean, heck, in this day and age, how far do you have to go to see how hard it is for people to love people who disagree with them? <laughs> right now, um, that's going on in, everywhere. So, you know, I guess it is asking worth asking ourselves, what are, are our deepest roots, right? What are your deepest roots? What grounds you the most? And, and, and are those roots giving you the right nutrients to be spiritually growing, right? And here's another question. If Jesus tried to uproot you right now, which roots would he have to sever in order to set you free to be planted in a new spiritual place? I mean, those are good questions. You know, is it possible that sometimes instead of just being like, you know, deeply rooted in tradition and deeply rooted in personal experience and deeply rooted in this is what I think is true, um, maybe sometimes um, some of us could be a bit more like Peter, you know, like um, who liked the seeds on the rocky soil, right? Didn't Peter get all worked up and excited right away about a lot of things? but he got easily distracted by his own fears, right? You know, when he's walking across the water, he suddenly gets afraid and he starts to sink and he got to get rescued. So he gets worked up, he grows quick and he's excited and he knows the answers, but then he's distracted by his own stuff. And it's funny, right? Peter, the guy who never found his grounding, and yet somehow he became the rock of the church. All right, we'll get to that. But look, here the thing is, look, we have to admit, people are excitable, right? We want to be part of something awesome. But also, we have really short attention spans. We lose interest amazingly quickly. Um, you know, no matter what the issue is, in no time flat, we're on to the next big story. You know, and, and when people are pressured, they do tend to revert to their automatic thoughts and automatic habits. In other words, when you're under pressure you got to think quick on your feet, you're going to reach down to your deepest roots and your strongest grounding, you know? Um, you know, so in other words, when, when things are easy and you're excited and motivated and busy and everything's going well, um, you know, that's easy. But when the hot, merciless sun of life bakes you, and you're having a really bad day, or when the weeds of life start to choke you, um, it's all too easy to find that our faith maybe wasn't as strong as we once thought it was. Um, but that's what Jesus is trying to get at with this parable. Um, you know, uh, and then he makes this mysterious claim that even those of us in the good soil with all the proper roots will still produce vastly different amounts of spiritual fruit in our lifetimes. He says, you know, some people are a hundredfold, some people are 60, some are 30. Um, 
so what is this? Is this is this now a competition for us to be clamoring to be not just you know having having uh, heard the word and understanding, but now being the best? I mean, no, that that that's not his point at all. You know, remember we we're looking at Peter a minute ago, but at the end of the day, this parable is known as the parable of the sower, not the parable of the seeds. So even when he explains and he talks about what the seeds are, and we get caught up in trying to figure out which seeds we are and in which soil we're in and where are our, are our roots and where are the weeds, the bottom line about this gospel, this parable, is that it is about the work of God, the sower. And God does not seem to be phased or surprised by the fact that three quarters of the seeds that are sown are going to result in catastrophic failure. I'm going to repeat that. God does not seem to be phased or surprised by the fact that the three quarters of all the seeds that are sown spiritually are going to result in catastrophic failure, right? Rocks, weeds, whatever. Um, and yet, that does not stop the kingdom of God. It does not stop the work of God. It does not stop the Holy Spirit. It does not stop Jesus or his mission or his ministry or his commitment. It doesn't stop Peter from becoming the rock of the church. Not because he was the one who produced a hundredfold, but because he was the one who produced any fold. You know, even though even though Jesus constantly complains about how hard-hearted and deaf so much of the world is, this fact remains. No matter who or how many times Jesus is rejected, you know, by whom or how many times, he continues to work. He continues to sow the seeds. So what do you sow in your daily life? Where are your real roots? See, we don't have to worry about which soil we're in because we know that through the grace of Christ, we remain planted firmly in his garden, no matter what happens to us in the world, by the world, because of the world. And, and you know what? This gospel proves that to the rest of the world's addiction to sowing everything but faith in, you know, all you need to say to them is, so what? In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Take a moment to share that peace with the people around you this morning watching. Um, go outside, talk to a neighbor, talk to somebody, um, make a call, send a text, sow the seed of love and community, and let the Holy Spirit do the nurturing. <laughs> and in the meantime, gathered into one by that Holy Spirit, let us take a moment to boldly pray the way Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon each one of you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. And remember, you are the body of Christ raised up for the world. So go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Thank you for joining me this morning. I'm glad you're here. I hope you have a safe and fulfilling and wonderful week. And I look forward to seeing you either right here on video or right over there in church next Sunday. God bless you all.